everyone. I am Dr. Rashmi Sharma and welcome to your YouTube channel Origin Idea. Today I will tell you about a procedure called intracytoplasmic sperm injection. What is intracytoplasmic sperm injection? So intracytoplasmic sperm injection is when we take one egg and take one sperm and inject into each egg and make the baby uh, by fertilization by ourselves. That is what is ICSI, intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So there are basically two methods of fertilization during in vitro fertilization. So one is the standard insemination in which the eggs are taken out from the woman's body. They are put in a dish and then sperm count of the husband is absolutely normal. Those sperms are washed and a lot of motile sperms are concentrated and approximately 50,000 to a lakh sperms are mixed per egg, you know, per egg in the <coughs> dish. So lots of sperms are left along with the eggs and that dish is kept in the incubator and the sperms they fertilize the egg themselves. This is how it happens naturally also in the tube. This is the standard IVF or standard insemination. But if there are some indications wherein we think that sperms may not be able to fertilize the eggs, so in those cases ICSI is done, intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So before coming to the indications and where it is needed, first let us understand that how it is done. So the process of ICSI for a patient is actually same as IVF. The patient will get around 10 to 12 days of injections, the lady, and when the eggs are ready, then eggs are taken out through the ultrasound under anesthesia. And then <clears throat> with the help of a very sophisticated micro manipulator machine, one egg is held with the help of a suction tip and sperms are dis, you know, immobilized by, you know, by breaking their tail and one sperm is sucked into the needle and that needle is then injected into the egg, the cytoplasm of the egg and then sperm is left inside the cytoplasm of the egg. So we chose the sperm, the best motile sperm and injected directly into the cytoplasm of the egg. This is intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Okay, so this is how it is done. It is a very sophisticated technique done in highly skilled specialized hands on a machine called micro manipulator. This is kind of a revolution which came into, you know, <clears throat> ART practice around 1983-85 and from then the treatment of male infertility has been revolutionized. Because by standard insemination, if you have to do the routine IVF, you need good number of sperms or good number of sperms. But around 40% infertility these days is due to male factor. So, <clears throat> such men who do not have sperms or have low count, they are seeing hope due to this very wonderful revolutionary technology. So, now coming to uh, in what cases ICSI is indicated, you know. So, uh, ICSI is indicated number one for male infertility. So, as I told you, around 40 in around 40% cases of infertile couple, husband is responsible. So either the count of the sperm is low, which is oligospermia, or the motility of the sperms is low, which is asthenospermia, or sometimes it is the abnormal shape of the sperm. So sperms are there, count is okay, motility is okay, but they are all abnormal shape, which is known as teratozoospermia. So oligo astheno teratozoospermia, <clears throat> 1 million count, 2 million count. In those cases, ICSI is definitely indicated. The other cases may be where the sperm count is zero that is azoospermia, but where the sperms can be retrieved from testes or from the epididymis, that is through PISA or TISA, we can retrieve some sperms from the testes, but the sperms are not so much that we can do normal IVF. In those cases also, we have to do ICSI. Then in some cases when, suppose we are dealing with a paralyzed male. So paralyzed male cannot give ejaculated sperm. In that case also, we have to take out sperms from the testes then also ICSI is indicated. So these are the patients where uh, there is a problem with the sperm count. There may be cases where the sperm count of the husband is absolutely normal and even then ICSI needs to be done. So those cases are number one could be unexplained infertility. So in about 15 to 20 percent couples who are suffering from infertility, there will be cases of unexplained needs. All the tests are normal. Husband's tests are normal. Wife tests are normal. And still, there is they are not able to conceive for 10 years, 20 years. So in those cases, the defect may be at the fertilization level. So those couples, 
if undergoing IVF cannot be left for standard insemination, they have to be given uh, XD. <coughs> the other cases may be if we are needing genetic testing of the embryo, that is pre-implantation genetic testing, wherein we form the embryo, take out few cells of the embryo and do send, we have to send it for genetic testing due to certain indications. So in those cases also, the embryos have to be formed by ICSI because if we do standard insemination along with the embryo, there could be a lot of sperms which may be sticking around the surface of the embryo and that will lead to abnormalities in our genetic result, test, testing results. So that is a case. Or there may be a case where the embryologist sees the egg under the microscope and finds that the covering of the egg, which is known as a zona, is particularly very thick. Those are rare cases, but uh, the experienced embryologist can detect them. In those cases also, they will like to go ahead with ICSI. Or they could be couples in who have already undergone one cycle of IVF, but in those, uh, you know, in that cycle, there was a total fertilization failure. So eggs were there, sperms were there. They were uh, given standard examination, but next day, embryologist saw and you know he saw that none of the eggs have fertilized which is known as total fertilization failure. So if there is a history in previous IVF of less fertilization or total fertilization failure, in that case also ICSI is indicated. So these are the indications in which ICSI should definitely be done. So <clears throat> now the question arises, you know, even uh, those patients who are undergoing standard IVF, they ask us this question and sometimes they request, Madam, why don't you do ICSI? So should ICSI be done for all? That is a question. So, or is ICSI better than uh, standard IVF? So I would say no. ICSI is not better than IVF. ICSI is to be done only when it is indicated. ICSI should not be done for all. The reason being, in standard IVF or in standard insemination, uh, nature is selecting the best sperm. Okay. In ICSI, we are choosing the sperm. So of course, our choice may not be as perfect as the God's choice. So. In unindicated cases, ICSI ideally should not be done. Also, there are some concerns that by doing this ICSI, you know, wherein we are we are interfering with the cell cytoplasm and you know, it's kind of an invasive technique. We are puncturing the egg. There could be some increase in the genetic imprinting disorders. Some there are very rare disorders like backward Beatman syndrome, Prader Willi syndrome, Angelman syndrome. Like these are very very rare uh, diseases in the baby but there are some unconfirmed reports in the literature that by doing ICSI there might be some increase in these disorders though it is said that the technique of ICSI is so useful for patients who are suffering from male infertility that this technique should not be denied to these couples just because of the fear of these very very rare genetic disorders but this also means that it should not be done in unindicated cases where IVF is indicated, IVF should be done, normal IVF for standard insemination should be done and where ICSI is indicated, definitely ICSI should be done. So this answers the question whether ICSI should be done for all or not. Now coming to the cost difference, the cost is around I guess 15 to 20,000 more than a standard IVF because of course it involves a a uh, very sophisticated machine, it involves uh, really skilled embryologists, I, you know, it's a very highly specialized technology, so the charges are a little higher. So in the end, I would say that it's a wonderful technology, it's a revolutionary technology which has kind of revolutionized the treatment of male infertility and in fact, uh, uh, because of this, uh, this advancement in technology, now there are men who have very very low sperm count like less than one million just few sperms visible or zero sperm count in which the sperms are taken out from the texas they can hope for their own genetic child which was earlier not possible so it's like a miracle of science yes thank you if you have any questions you can uh, put them in the comment section below i would be very happy to answer those thank you so much